Now, codeine is a version of morphine where one of the hydroxyl group is replaced by an ether group, OCH3. Now, this OCH3 group is less polar than the OH group. Now, because it's less polar, it passes the blood-brain barrier more easily. It's less polar, so it's more hydrophobic, so it passes the blood-brain barrier more easily. However, the effectiveness of codeine is only one-tenth the, stre the strength of morphine, so it's 10 times less potent than morphine. Why is that so? Because when these opiates enter the brain, the opiates bind to endorphin receptors. Endorphin receptors are receptors that are associated with the feeling of pain. Now, these receptors cannot distinguish between uh, natural molecules of endorphin or the opiate molecules. So these opiate molecules and those natural endorphin molecules, they have the same active constituent. So the endorphin receptors bind to these opiate molecules. And as these bind, they produce dopamine. So dopamine, this is responsible for giving the brain that feel-good effect. Now, what happens is that only 10% of all codeine that is consumed is converted to morphine. And those endorphin receptors here, they have a greater affinity for morphine rather than for codeine. So they will prefer to bind with morphine rather than codeine. So because only 10% of codeine is converted to morphine, so it's only 10 times um, less potent than morphine. However, it has a wide therapeutic window and it also has limited potential for abuse because it does not give that much of dopamine in comparison to morphine or heroin. Now, let's look at heroin now. So, heroin or diamorphine is synthesized by reacting morphine with ethanoic acid in the presence of sulfuric acid. And in this reaction, so you have the formation of one ester group here and another ester group here. So this is the hydroxyl group. So this is an alcohol. And this is reacted to ethanoic acid, which is a carboxylic acid. So alcohol and carboxylic acid react to form an ester. This is called esterification. And because we have two reactions of esterification, so you have diesterification. So this is one ester, this is another ester, so it is called a diester. Now, if you look at the structure of heroin, you will see that these groups, they make the molecule more soluble in lipids. They are less polar in comparison to the OH group, less polar, therefore they are more hydrophobic. Because it's more hydrophobic, makes it easier for heroin to cross the blood-brain barrier. Now, remember that the drug needs to have hydrophilic properties and hydrophobic properties in order to be able to be soluble in blood as well as in the lipid in the blood-brain barrier. So, in order to have both solubility in aqueous and solubility in lipids, we can increase the solubility of opiates in aqueous solution by converting them into ionic salts. So if you acidify the opiate, you will produce the sulfate or the chloride salt. To make heroin more soluble, what can be done is 
You can react it with acid, sulfuric acid, for example, if you want to get the sulfate. And the hydrogen here would react with the amine here. And this becomes positively charged. And this is SO4 to minus. So this is the sulfate molecule. So because this one has valency 2, so you have two of these binding to sulfate. So in this form, in this form here, heroin becomes more soluble in the blood. So it becomes easy to be transported into the blood. Now, once it reaches the brain, it's going to revert back to its undissociated form. So in the brain, it's going to go back into this form. So this one is largely hydrophobic. So it's going to cross the blood-brain barrier easily. This one is largely hydrophilic. So it's going to travel very easily into the blood up to the brain. Now, once heroin enters the brain, it's going to bind to one of those endorphin receptors and will immediately produce dopamine, the feel-good factor. However, the effect is only temporary. So the effect is very short-lived in comparison to morphine. So heroin is 10 times more potent than morphine as the two ester groups make it much less polar than morphine, so it's more soluble in the lipid layer. So it travels to the brain much faster in comparison to morphine. Now, diamorphine or heroin is more powerful, it's more addictive than morphine. The heroin addicts feel compelled to continue using the drug because of its euphoric effect. So there is kind of addiction to the presence of uh, dopamine. Um, so it also causes withdrawal symptoms. So within 6 to 24 hours, they need to take the drug again. And these withdrawal symptoms include craving for heroin, hot and cold sweats, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, anxiety, and muscular cramps. Treatment for opiate addiction may include using methadone as a replacement drug. Now, methadone is a synthetic drug. It also has the active part of um, the opiates and it functions as a strong analgesic but it does not produce euphoria so it just calms down the withdrawal symptoms but it doesn't uh, cause that feel-good um, effect so the addict can gradually reduce the amount of methadone that they are taking and in doing so they can also manage the withdrawal symptoms so with time they can wean um, the addiction completely